humanity landing on the moon, man, that was maybe the greatest thing ever. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. The moon is a fixture in the night sky, but it is easy to take it for granted. The presence of this massive boulder in orbit around Earth is something we have come to accept as normal. Surely this must be the standard, right? Moons are found on many planets and they have existed for eons, but has it? The moon, in all candor, is not an eternal object, to which the question, where did it come from, must be answered. Is it possible that a large piece of Earth went into orbit when the sun was young? The moon is 800,000 years older than Earth, therefore that can't be true, right? Did Earth's gravity just up and take the moon one day? The results of scientific analyses make this unlikely. According to Elon Musk, our entire understanding of the moon was incorrect. Join us as we explore why Elon Musk thinks that the moon is not what we think it is. There are numerous peculiar features of the moon. There have been discoveries of brass, mica, uranium-236, and neptunium-237 on the moon's surface. These compounds have never been discovered naturally, in addition to not appearing on Earth natively. On the moon, rocks have been discovered that have ten times as much titanium as similarly sized rocks on Earth. The whole thought of this has researchers baffled. The orbit of the moon is almost perfectly round, Given that almost every body in space travels along an elliptical route, this is a rather odd phenomenon. It rotates in exactly the same amount of time as an orbit around the Earth. This implies that the same side always faces the planet. We never see the opposite side, which is much stranger. The Moon's lack of a solid core is among its oddest characteristics. Nearly all scientists agree that the Moon is hollow in reality. They are aware that it at least has a center with a very low intensity. According to studies, the Moon's largest mass concentration is located extremely near the surface. In actuality, NASA made an extremely high-impact crash with the Moon in 1969 with a lunar module. For nearly 30 minutes, the Moon appeared to be hollow as it rang like a bell. The diameter of our Sun is nearly 400 times greater than that of the Moon. It just so happens that the Sun is 400 times farther distant than the Moon. They appear to be the same size in the sky as a result of this. This indicates that during a solar eclipse, the Sun is completely blocked out by the Moon. But is everything here just a coincidence? The likelihood that they are not mere coincidences is higher. Despite the fact that we have been watching it since the beginning of time, the Moon continues to astonish us. The Moon still contains a molten core that it formed approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Therefore, it is far from being a cold, dead, or inert body. The Moon's crust wrinkles as it cools down and continues to contract. Moonquakes as large as magnitude 5 on the Richter scale are being caused by that contraction in combination with gravitational loads. All of this lends credence to the idea that the Moon was not formed along with the rest of the solar system but rather as a result of a collision between the primordial Earth and another planet. Theia, a hypothetical planet, was smashed by the hit, and the Moon was formed by the accumulation of Theian fragments and tons of material thrown from the injured Earth. One problem with that notion was that although the majority of the Moon should be made up of Theian debris, the rock that astronauts brought back was similar to Earth's. Scientists from the United States and Japan have now solved the puzzle without using the word coincidence. While we're talking about moon rocks, the Chinese have discovered some peculiar rock on the moon's far side, which they believe came from the mantle. But let's begin with how it was made. A cloud of gas and dust that congealed into clumps in the icy depths of space is thought to have produced the solar system 4.6 billion years ago. The Sun most likely formed first, surrounded by a disk of material that accreted to create planets, and at least in part, their moons. The process by which planets and moons are formed is the one that science has the most trouble describing, but not our moon, which is thought to have been produced later by that enormous collision. There was a hitch, though. 
Around 4.5 billion years ago, Theia smashed into the primeval molten Earth at an angle that caused it to shatter. Enough of the early Earth persisted to develop into the world we are familiar with and love to mistreat. Theia, which was around the size of Mars, and material displaced from here would have been the main causes of the Moon. The problem was that computer calculations suggested that Theian rock would make up the majority of the Moon. But astronaut returned pebbles are similar to those from Earth. When they realized that the hypothetical collision had taken place just about 50 million years after the Sun began, they had an epiphany. At that point, the proto-Earth emerging from the nebula would have been entirely molten. Theia was likely cool and solid, as opposed to the swirling body of magma that it would have become. As a result, Carato and colleagues developed a novel theory based on the collision of a massive hard rock with a magmatic early Earth. The magma would have been far more heated by the collision than the Theian pieces. Then, heated magma would have increased in size and exploded into space. According to Carato, who has extensively studied the chemical composition of proto-Earth magma, in our model, about 80% of the Moon is made of proto-Earth materials. In most of the earlier models, the impactor makes up around 80% of the Moon. There is a noticeable difference. Both the Earth and Moon still have their heated cores after many billions of years. Quakes are one result of adding gravity's stresses. Continental plates that are part of the Earth's crust float atop a sea of molten rock. Here, earthquakes are brought on by plate movement, bedrock irregularities, or hydraulic fracturing. There are no continental plates or oil firms on the Moon. The Moon, however, is not merely tectonically active. From 1969 to 1977, 28 quakes measuring between 2 and 5 on the Richter scale were reported. To the unaided eye, the Moon does not resemble a dried fruit, but photographs taken in 2010 by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter mission reveal millions of thrust defects. When viewed from the lunar surface, these faults resemble little stair-shaped cliffs, or scarps. Each is about tens of yards high and a few miles long. There are several deep earthquakes on the Moon that can occur up to 620 miles below the surface. We are stating that the Moon is tectonically active rather than that it has plate tectonics. The Moon is made up of just one plate. However, the crust shrinks and can fracture as it cools, much like the skin of a grape that is drying out to become a raisin. Although the lunar crust is significantly thicker than the Earth's, seismic wave analysis has been used to locate the magmatic core. The Moon's core is significantly smaller and cooler than the Earth's, with the iron metal likely including a significant amount of sulfur, which allows it to remain molten at lower temperatures. But what is that Moon mantle like? The Apollo missions set down on the Moon's near side, but the Chinese performed a historic probe landing on the opposite side, where they think they discovered mantle rocks that had been driven to the surface by large impacts. A planet's crust may split when a large meteor or other object collides with it, allowing pieces from the interior to escape. Volcanoes on this planet, among other things, can provide us hints regarding the makeup of the mantle. While the moon is proving to be more than just a dead rock, it appears that its volcanoes have been dormant for a very long time. The last eruption occurred during the time of the dinosaurs. The idea was to closely examine impact craters that were large enough to possibly have caused mantle material to surge upward. Von Karman, a massive crater in the South Pole Aitken Basin, is the oldest and largest of the far side craters. The enormous crater also provides evidence of ancient lava flows, suggesting that the moon's mantle may have touched the surface there. When dozens of volcanoes were erupting on the surface of the Moon two to four billion years ago, lava rivers and lakes filled the lunar surface. The iconic Dark Maria we observe on the Moon's hemisphere facing Earth was formed by the lava outpourings from these lunar volcanic eruptions. And unlike most eruptions on Earth, these ones were enormous. Nearly all eruptions on Earth pale in comparison to them. And it turned out that the Moon's volcanoes had created more than just lava. They also produced a significant amount of water vapor, which the researchers claim condensed and turned into ice on the Moon's surface. The Moon is currently nearly airless. However, according to the scientists, carbon monoxide and water vapor clouds were also produced by these old Moon volcanoes. 
The moon was encircled by the clouds, which created flimsy atmospheres. Water vapor may have condensed as a form of frost on the surface under those circumstances. Over time, that frost accumulated, forming layers that could have been hundreds of feet thick. We picture it as a slowly accumulating frost on the moon. According to the experts, sheets of ice just below the surface of the moon still contain remnants of the frost that converted to ice. There may be substantial ice sheets 15, 30 feet below the surface. Another earlier study conducted in 2020 hypothesized that ice may still be present on roughly 2,300 square miles of the moon's surface today. One possible source of that water is a volcano. How much ice, then, could have developed in these transient lunar atmospheres? It appears that the moon may have been more icier then than previously believed. A significant eruption is thought to occur on average once every 22,000 years. Based on it, it was determined that a significant portion of the water vapor from such eruptions, about 41%, condensed as frost or ice on the surface of the moon. The atmospheres were transient, but each time they developed, they lasted for around a thousand years. Each time during that time, they vanished almost entirely before they reappeared. That much time, though, is more than adequate for ice to have developed. There was plenty of time for ice to form as the atmospheres escaped over a period of around 1,000 years. The researchers claim that those ice sheets were very water-rich. In reality, there are about 18 quadrillion pounds of volcanic water. Furthermore, it's possible that the thicker polar ice caps and the frost were both visible from Earth. How awesome would that have been to literally see? The moon has ice tops. According to the researchers, the majority of the water ice should still exist today. If so, it might be a useful source of water for upcoming astronauts. However, they may need to do a little digging because the ice is most likely buried under several feet of lunar regolith, dust and pebbles. We must dig deeper and search for it. According to geologists, a large portion of the ice on our moon certainly originates from extinct volcanoes. When the moon possessed transient atmospheres brought on by volcanic explosions, the ice originally appeared as frost. Future moon astronauts could be able to get valuable drinking water from the ice. Additionally, in lunar samples from a Chinese expedition, scientists have found a fresh and sustainable source of water on the moon for upcoming explorers. Scientists have discovered water trapped inside glass beads that were created in violent impacts from space rocks on the lunar surface providing what they characterize as a possible reserve of this priceless resource for upcoming human activity on the moon. China brought back samples from the moon in 2020, and those samples included these gleaming multicolored glass beads. The water content was only a tiny portion of that. The beads ranged in size from one hair's diameter to many hairs. There may be a significant amount of water present in the billions or trillions of these impact beads, but mining it would be challenging. Yes, a ton of glass beads will be needed. On the moon, however, there are an enormous number of beads. The solar wind's continuous assault of hydrogen allowed these beads to continuously produce water. The conclusions are based on 32 glass beads that were randomly chosen from lunar sand that the Chang'e 5 moon mission returned. The Chang'e 5 mission gathered about 3.8 pounds of dirt and 32 glass beads that were between tens and hundreds of micrometers diameter were studied from the tiny amount of soil that was made available for this investigation. It was discovered that the glass beads could hold up to 2,000 parts per million of water by weight. These impact beads, which are spread out all over, are the result of melting material cooling after being expelled by incoming space pebbles. The beads might be heated, perhaps by upcoming robotic missions, to extract water. To evaluate whether this is practicable and, if so, whether the water is safe to drink, more research is required. This demonstrates that water may be replenished on the moon's surface, creating a new water reservoir there. Based on samples brought back by the Apollo moonwalkers more than 50 years ago, previous investigations discovered water in glass beads created by lunar volcanic activity. These, too, may be able to supply water for future crews as well as rocket fuel. Water is crucial for future moon exploration, including prospective long-term lunar bases staffed by astronauts, not just as a source of drinking water but also as an element in fuel. 
The liquid water bodies that are characteristic of Earth are absent from the Moon. However, it is believed that a sizable amount of water may be present on its surface, for instance as ice patches that are trapped in minerals and located in continuously shaded areas. The most sought-after resource for enabling sustained planetary surface exploration is water. Future lunar explorers would be well served to understand how water is produced, stored, and supplied so they can extract and use it for exploration. By the end of 2025, NASA hopes to return astronauts to the lunar surface. They'll aim for the South Pole, where it's thought that craters are full of frozen water and are always under darkness. The Moon's most surprising region isn't where you might expect, though. The Moon's far side has a certain mysticism. The fact that it is always hidden from view and never faces Earth has given it the erroneous moniker the Dark Side, despite the fact that sunlight does, in fact, reach its surface. It's the region of the Moon that we will never visit, unless we board a spacecraft and travel there. However, the Moon's most enigmatic regions aren't on its far side. They are at the poles, where the sun is constantly low in the sky. Numerous craters in the North and South Poles never ever receive direct sunlight and as a result, never experience the warmth of our star. This lighting situation creates unique circumstances. They are what are known as permanently shadowed zones in astronomy, and they have been cold and dark for billions of years. The moon's powdery surface has been explored up close by astronauts and spacecraft have mapped nearly every inch of the planet's surface from above. However, no one has ever looked down into the shadowy interiors of those craters. Astronomers believe that if they had the correct equipment, they would be able to see inside and discover something amazing. Water. Naturally, there isn't any flowing water on the lunar surface. Instead, there are ice crystals. According to scientists, the moon has been hiding water for eons, brought by comets and asteroids throughout the Moon's early existence. Our own planet is supposed to have received water in the same way. Icy particles would have been dispersed across the surface by the bombardment, and any that were exposed to the Sun would not have endured. However, any ice fragments that may have fallen into areas that are always in shadow would have remained undamaged and continued to sparkle in their icy surroundings. NASA is eager to approach locations that are always in the shadows. For their brief flights, the Apollo astronauts chose to land at locations along the Moon's equator that were thought to be simpler and safer. On the other hand, the following generation of astronauts will reach the South Pole. People could ultimately return to the lunar surface with technology designed to harvest its oxygen and hydrogen for use in life support systems and even fuel allowing us to stay there for weeks or months at a time if they can get their gloved hands on water ice. Moon water mining is still more of a science fiction concept than a practical one. For the time being, missions like Shadow Cam will continue to explore from a distance, giving scientists daydreams about the moon's most enigmatic shadows more substance. There does appear to be something somewhat sanctified about a place that has been cold, dark, and invisible to human sight for billions of years. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.